Many marketing staff to assist in the recruitment of members and sale of Kakuyo properties. The SAC was following areas where Kakuyo real estate had been, had business activities as confirmed by the chairman of the SACO. I don't know if you are trying to say Kakuyo came first, then Ekesa came later. So what was happening, wherever Kakuyo real estate was, Ekesa SACO also moved in those areas to recruit members. The governance structure of the SACO did not grow in tandem with the rapid recruitment of members and the opening of new branches in several counties. So as much as we said the area of operation was in history, but the area, the society opened branches in so many counties, we shall be letting you know of those counties where you had branches for Kesa Sako. So it was never Nairobi as other indicated in the bylaws. Though the SAC was registered to be a separate legal entity, the management of the SACO was not separated from the management of Kakuyo Real Estate. It was more of a subsidiary, you can put that one in quotes, or an activity, you can also put that one in quotes, of Kakuyo Real Estate. Since the managing director of Kakuyo Real Estate trained it as a personal entity with all committee members in the circle, paying his employees to the company. The decision making in the circle was squarely made by the managing director of Kakuyo Real Estate, which I'll be demonstrating that in due course of our report. The officials of the circle did not develop an ideal decision making structure in the circle and ignore what, or deliberately refused to recognize a case of SACO as a legal entity as by section 12 of the, of the Corporate Society Act, which provides that, and I quote, upon registration, every society shall become a body corporate by the name under which it is registered in our case, a case of SACO society with perpetual succession and a common seal and with power to hold movable and immovable property of every description to enter in contracts to sue and be sued and do all things necessary for the purpose of or in accordance with its bylaws. So your side was supposed to operate as a legal person. Once it is registered, it becomes a person in the eyes of the law. We also looked at members' complaints. Since, the late, since late the year 2017 and through the year 2018, the Office of the Commissioner for Cooperative Development has been awash with complaints from members of the Kesa Sacco Society ranging from the following. One, delay in disbursement of loans approved for members. Number two, charging and holding members' property as security for loans not released to them. Three, late refunds to members who have been withdrawn from the circle. There are also a complaint of harassment of members money for services from the circle. Failure to hold any general meeting for members. Lack of communication to members on what was happening in their society. As a result of these complaints from members, the Commissioner invoked Section 60A of the Corporate Societies Act and instituted an impromptu inspection of the society on 30th March 2017. And this inspection revealed that, one, a case of Society, society Limited and Kakuyo Real Estate were presenting, were presenting themselves as one and the same entity. B, 
the Sako and Kakuya real estate shared the same local and offices. Hence, members could not make the difference between the two organizations. What we are saying, you will find a member referring to Kakuyo when he's talking about a Kesa, or talking about a Kesa when he's referring to Kakuyo. So the two were really mixed up. C, a Kesa Sako Society Limited had not put in place governance structures expected of a cooperative society. The internal management structure and systems of the two entities were mixed up. Proper books of accounts were not maintained by the SACO, and the society had failed to meet its obligations on loans and refunds. So that was why the commissioner instituted that in property inspection on 30 of March 2017. And then we had also an intention of consultation of registration. So now, on 28th of July 2017, that's what the other one was, uh, 30th of March 2017, so when it came to July, the commissioner gave notice of intention to cancel the certificate of registration of a case of society to do the following. One, the society had failed to amend and register its bylaws in regard to uh, the area of operation as under by law one, B, opening of the common bond of the site, because the site was already operating outside zero of operation, and the commissioner had advised the need to amend on that. B, failure to keep books of accounts of the site in accordance with section 25 of the Corporate Societies Act and rule 13 of the Cooperative Society Rules and the Society Bylaws. So after this intention, which we may term the first intention to cancel the site on 28th July 2017, we had the second intention to cancel registration by the commissioner on 17th November 2017. And the commissioner of cooperatives issued a second notice of 21 days to a case circle of the intention to cancel registration, requiring the management committee to make a response. This was because no satisfactory response was forthcoming from the SACO Management Committee on issues raised in the inspection report earlier carried in the SAC. Now, there is cancellation and registration of the SAC. A case of SAC society having shown no effort to address issues raised by the commissioner in the inspection report presented at the Management Committee in the year 2017, the commissioner ordered for the liquidation of the society, and that was on 20, that March 2018, by consult notice number 2683. Now, after the consultation, the registration of the society was given, was done, there was an appeal against the consultation and the registration. So, in a letter dated 29th March 2018, a case, of Sarko, a case of Sarko Society, through its chairman, Mr. David Karukingari, and Honorary Secretary, Mrs. Gladys Wanjiku Muridi, that was the secretary then, appealed to the cabinet secretary in charge of cooperatives against the decision of the commissioner for cooperatives to put a case under liquidation. And the main reasons for the appeal include the following, among others, one, the chairman argued that the intention to cancel the certificate of registration was not served upon the SACO. Two, that the officials of the case of SACO were not trained and given proper guidance by officers of the commissioner on how to run the SACO. And number three, that the SACO is keen on meeting its objectives. Now, the Cabinet Secretary, having looked at the bill appeal, in a letter to the SACO reference number CS stroke 17112 for the 34, he noted that the Commissioner acted within the Cooperative Societies Act, and thus she followed due process in registering a case of SACO. The Cabinet Secretary, however, 
in an effort to resuscitate a case cycle, asked the Commissioner for Cooperatives to attach two officers to the society to oversee the implementation of a roadmap which had been agreed upon between the society and the Commissioner's office that the management undertook to implement. Actually, the committee put in writing that they were ready to adhere to the roadmap. So briefly about the roadmap on the the Kesa, the roadmap had the following key issues to be implemented by the SAD in order for it to be resuscitated. Number one, they had to prepare a full list of members demanding deposit refunds. Number two, they were to establish a availability of funds in the society to meet the refunds. Because that was the main problem in the society, the refunds. The society was to establish availability of funds in the society to meet the refunds. Then the society chairman promised that he was negotiating with a strategic partner who had promised to inject 500 million in this business that would assist him to put money in a case of circle to enable the circle refund members who had withdrawn and whose demand then was 424 million. So at this time, it was around July, the society said they were going to look for money so that they can refund the total refunds that were pending then, 424 million. That is in July. Then the office was also to oversee the refunds to members. Update records of the site, including accounting documents in readiness for auditing. Prepare a report on the separation of the circle from the company. And prepare amendments to the current bylaws for presentation to the general meeting. And finally, to convene a general meeting within three months. Once all the above were complied within a period of three months, the commissioner would leave the order of registration. So actually the registration was given conditions to fulfill certain things before the registration uh, would be cancelled. So we reviewed, we looked at the review of the implementation of the roadmap. So we looked at what was achieved after the three months as given by the commissioner. So after the lapse of the three months period given by the cabinet secretary, that is by October 2018, the following was the position. That is now in October. The list of refunds to members had been updated. Eh? And of course, it continues to be updated as more members with the draw. Number two, the books of account for the year 2017 had been updated and were ready for audit. Number three, Separation of a case of society limited from Gaguya real estate was not complete. The two entities were still sharing offices, staff, and other services without agreed methods of cash cost sharing. Number four, the proposed schedule of amendments of bylaws was complete and was awaiting members' input and approval by the general meeting. And number four, the society had managed to refund 2,006 members are a sum of 116 million. So within the, the three months, 116 million had been refunded to members. Out of the total amount that was outstanding in July was how much? 424 million. Shillings that was demanded as at July 2018. However, the demand had risen to over 500 million shillings by the end of October 2018. It is worth noting that all the money used for refunds was purely from loans recoveries and some savings by a few members who are still loyal to a Kesa Sarko Society. So the 116 million is the collections that was made from the members. The refund of 116 was given from the members, eh? that was given to 2006 members. And number six, the chairman was unable to inject funds into the Kansas Society 
as promised, having failed to secure a strategic partner, and neither were their efforts by Kaguya Real Estate on its own to put money in Ekasa Sacco Society Limited. In conclusion, the roadmap failed to resuscitate the Sacco, mainly due to the failure by the chairman to deliver on his promise to inject 500 million shillings that he expected from a strategic partner. So after this, uh, the commissioner reviewed this, and it was agreed that a case of society having failed to satisfy the above directives of the cabinet sector in charge of cooperatives, a decision was made to have an inquiry conducted in the affairs of the case of society. So this inquiry came to go deeper into the issues that led to where you were as a case of society. I now move to chapter two. And in chapter two, I'm purely looking at the methodology. The inquiry team employed the following methods in collecting, compiling, and analyzing data. One, we did desktop review. We did interviews, observations, and also we received written submissions from some of the stakeholders of a case of society. We also examined the following records, the bank statements, audit financial statements, minute files, trial balances, check counterfoils, the Corporate Societies Act, the bylaws of the society, and policies of the society, among other documents. Of course, such an exercise, you won't fail to get a few challenges. So the challenges we encountered, we, we noticed one was, of course, interruption by case circle members. They were all over in the commissioner's office demanding for refunds. Then there is high turnover of key staff and management due to resignations and termination. Actually, this was witnessed after July up to around November. So many staff of uh, Kesa Sako, some resigned, others were uh, terminated. Then demonstrations by members that led to partial closure of the site head office. We can confirm to you that we, one of the days, we ate tear gas. Eh? We can put it in quotes to look at tear gas for Yala Towers. Eh? I now move to chapter three, where I'll only do part of it, and then call my colleague to continue from where I reach. Eh? So under chapter three, we are now looking at the findings, and this finding is under several subheadings, and the first one is on governance in the society. Governance is a key aspect that directs on how decisions are made in an organization. We made the following observations on the governance structure of the SAT. And if we start with the management committee, the management of a case of SAT is composed of seven management committee members and three of the committee members. We found the following eh, after perusing the minutes of a case circle and interviewing the committee members. Number one, the honorary secretary of a case of SACO also toppled up as the chief executive officer. That's the only sector in them. Uh, Gladys Wanjiku Murivi. And this contravenes section 284D of the Corporate Citizen Act, which says that no person shall be a member of the committee if he receives any remuneration, salary, or other payment from the Corporate Society save in accordance with this act. Which section is also fortified under by the number 37D of a case of Sacco? So we can't say that it's not, not because it's also in their own bylaws. But this is an employee, but he is also a board member. So that simply means uh, he's also 